I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This video is one in a series I did with my friend Ryan Harrell there sitting next to me in which we go through every single one of the BL Heli 32 options and tell you what they do and, most importantly, when you might want to change them. In this one, we're talking about ramp up power. Ramp up power. What is it? I don't know, but if you're watching this video, it's because you want to know what ramp up power is and what it does. You've come to the right place. If you look down in the video description, there is a playlist link with all of the other videos in this series where we, you can learn everything about BLH32. And if that's what you're into, go check that playlist out. If some of the videos in the playlist are private, it just means they haven't released yet. I didn't want to dump a whole hour of content on the channel at once. Let's talk about ramp up power now, though. So ramp up power um, basically across the board controls the the change that is allowed in the duty cycle of the PWM. So it's basically saying so, any so single jump. Can, can, hang on, hold on. So the duty cycle of the PWM, could we make an analogy that that's essentially like the throttle as you, you know, you're stepping on the accelerator right. on your car. It's how long the FET is driven on per cycle of the PWM. And as you raise the throttle, you get a longer on time. Right. Okay, so go ahead. Ramp up so, power is? Um, it's basically limiting the degree to which the, P the duty cycle can change. So um, again, I, I mentioned that DMAG compensation used to include this parameter as part of it, and there was only two settings, and that was it. So now you can control the ramp-up power completely separately, and so you can reduce it dramatically, which basically only allows the FETs to change at a certain rate. Um, what's interesting, again, I did some cross-testing between ramp-up power and timing, and did like a, a cross-tab where I did a mm -hmm, multivariate mm -hmm, test, mm -hmm. and, um, and tested them with different settings and, and looked at the response times. And you can actually go fairly low on ramp up power before it actually starts really impacting the the, the actual because RPM accelerator of the acceleration be, of the motor. Because because the ramp up power prevents, it limits the ability of the ESC to go from say zero throttle, boom, all the way up to like whatever. Right. But in reality, you're seldom making those giant jumps well, anyway. And here's the thing, even when you do make those jumps, it doesn't actually reduce the actual acceleration of the prop um, dramatically until you get quite low. Okay. And, w and the reason why that's happening is because there's a physical limitation on the propeller in terms of how quickly it can change RPMs. Right. So basically what you're doing is you're preventing a lot of wasted energy during the time period which the propeller is actually not accelerating because there's the moment of inertia is too high. So it reduces that insane current peak that happens oh. at the very beginning without really in slowing down the acceleration. Because as, as we all know, a stuck motor draws a ton of right. current the as the current ESC, is the stall current. And when you raise the throttle rapidly, but the prop has not accelerated yet, essentially that's where you get that current spike. So could we could we benefit from turning this down? Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't able to detect any significant reduction in um, in uh, response, time. response time until I was like below twenty percent. That's going to vary a little depending on your motor. A really torquey right. motor might need more more right, right. Uh, headroom here mm -hmm. to avoid performance loss. Correct. But in theory, you would reduce those current spikes by turning this down a little mm -hmm. bit. Absolutely. Um, maybe a, maybe somebody who's running a twenty amp ESC who doesn't actually have here. more a little more likely to fry might turn that down. Yeah. So um, actually, if you go into the Data Explorer This here, is Ryan's website, miniquadtestbench.com, which you all certainly know about, but if not... <laughs> you can see in here, um, I have, if you look in the Data Explorer under mechanical delay testing, um, I have a couple of things in here. So here's, um, this is with um, Bielheli, regular old school Bielheli, okay. um, because that's the uh, ESC that I have on the bench. So this is just with startup power, not... Mm -hmm. um, not ramp up power. Okay. Uh, so that I don't know exactly how those translate, um, but uh, you can see here that um, I have high timing at 0 0.3, 0 0.031, 0 0 0.063, 0.125, 0.5, and then I have so I have each of these tested uh, on the different timings. So high, medium, high, okay. and medium. So this is like. Um, this is like 16 degrees, this is like uh, 24 degrees, and this is like 31 degrees timing. Okay. Um, and then these are the, I don't remember exactly what the percentages translate to, but um, it's, uh, the stock on is 0.5 okay. on startup power. So I guess that's 50%. So that would be 12.5%, 6.3%, 3.1%. Okay. Um, 
and how do they compare? So if, for instance, if we look at medium high, which is what I would recommend, we can go ahead and add in all of the different timings or the different uh, startup powers in here. And uh, so we also see amps, so we can see the oh voltage yeah, right. spike. We need amps, probably more than RPMs. Let's go that way. There we go. Yeah. So you can see that pretty much all of them are the same until you get down here to um, 0.31. Uh huh. So yeah. No, really, no, because we're not hitting the cap. Right. But the cap, we're just not hitting it. But you can also see here that these current spikes drop off for yes. each setting. Yeah. Until like this one is really significantly dropped, but. So you're seeing that current spike while the motor's not actually spinning yet. Right. But it's not really dramatically impacting that current the acceleration. Spike, and that current spike is so short. That people right. might think, oh, it's gonna, you're going to get longer battery life. No, no, no. What, where I think this is going to actually potentially make a difference is, let's say you've got a 20 amp ESC and your motors are frying it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that current spike. is, right. And I'm picking on 20 amp ESCs because a lot of times the that they'll be more susceptible to voltage spikes, even though right. technically they're rated to so, the same voltage. Yeah. And... I run 20 amp ESCs on some ridiculous a good, setups. A well-spec 20 amp ESC will do fine. But right. if you're popping ESCs, well, just go buy better ESCs. But <laughs> if you if you want to try reducing this a little bit, that may help reduce those transient current spikes. Right. So do you change this? Do you leave this at default on all yours? Or do you I have do. a value? I, I have do really. It? I mean, I haven't. Again, I don't run into things that often. So And there's really no reason to increase it then since most no, of the time yeah. we're not. We're not hitting that limit anyway. Definitely, but I think you could you could probably get down to twenty percent, uh, to to you know somewhere between twelve and twenty or ten and twenty percent without causing a dramatic increase if you have in, a or decrease in handling. If you have a thrust stand or if you're a racer who's doing laps very consistently, you could you could compare. Mm -hmm. Most pilots, though, you probably if you lower it too mm -hmm. much, you'll get reduction in output power, and you, right. you may not even notice a difference because you're just not that sensitive. Yeah, so, it's, I mean it's not dramatic. If you look at the curve here, yeah, um, what's it, the difference in thrust? By it's, the way, it does it does get there. Right. It gets, it gets there. It, it just, just gets there slightly. How much longer does it take to get so there? That What's is, the difference? Uh, like hundred milliseconds. No, no, is no, that no, right? no, no, no. Sorry. Um, that's like I misread it. Microseconds. So, yes. So that's like eight milliseconds. Okay. Well, that's not nothing. So, it's not nothing, not nothing, but it's not dramatic either. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, if you look at this, eight the, the whole the prop yeah. is taking. You know, how long does it take to get to RPM to like, to, to a total of you know 120 milliseconds that's a, that's so, a, that's so it's maybe 10 percent slower five five to ten percent slower yeah that's, so that's like that's 160 something. milliseconds to so you that definitely flat part there, you but definitely a lot of acceleration happens here want to err on the high side otherwise you're going to be hurting your performance right, for very with little, little gain okay. um so and the the other thing that that can help with is again we talked about block blocked props and things mm -hmm. like that so it's going to reduce that a little bit so that um, the likelihood of blowing an ESC due to an impact um, mm -hmm. on the motor or the motor locking up is going to be lower with the lower startup power. Oh, sorry. So here's here's where I want to that, – that brings me to the next thing we should talk about, which mm -hmm. is current protection. Mm -hmm. And that is going to bring us to the end of this video. But, of course, there's a whole lot of other BLH32 options, and Ryan and I will be covering – every single one of them. Look down in the video description. There's a link to a playlist. And if some of those videos are private, it just means they haven't come out yet. There's like an hour of content here. So come back to the channel and eventually all of them will be released. And then you can uh, learn everything you want to know about BLLA32. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying.